Well, we are excited um, to bring you some updates about GovHub. And GovHub is really, you know, the tie that binds us. Everybody in the room, or most of us anyway, are users of GovHub in some level. So um, we're really happy to report on some of our big happenings over the past year and then also take a look into the next fiscal year and kind of what's on the roadmap and what you can expect from, from GovHub and from our team in that regard. So we'll start a big year for GovHub. It certainly was. We accomplished a lot um, in the last, whether you look at the last 12 months rolling or the last fiscal year, either way, it, um, a lot has happened. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the future facing roadmap. And we also wanna announce some new sites that joined in the last year um, you may or may not know about. All right, so starting out, a really, really big year for GovHub. We had three major initiatives um, over the course of the last year. Um, all of our sites, as you know, got a refresh. Um, we had the Bloom design roll out across all of our websites. Um, Julie just kind of showed you some of that with um, its context in Orchard. We'll talk more about that. You may not know, we also had a major release of Drupal 10, um, up, updated from Drupal 9. When we first built GovHub a few years ago, we were on Drupal 8, as you may recall. So now we're on Drupal 10. Um, and then of course, the same team that you deal with, with GovHub, our same folks um, built Orchard for us that Julie just gave us the in-depth look into. So we'll start with Bloom. All right, so Bloom um, impacted all of us. And it was a major overhaul, even though the design um, wasn't a, a total overhaul, it was more of a refresh, there was major changes that happened. So we, we did the design, we did all new development for all, all of the components to make sure that they, they were refreshed. Um, it took us about a year and a half really in total for the design, the development, and then the rollout. And the rollout itself was a major project. Um, every site got their homepage kind of hand done by one of us on our team. And a lot, in a lot of cases, some other key pages were also updated across some of the, the sites that use service pages and other kind of landing pages. It was hundreds of hours of work. I don't even know how many, but it was so worth it. We have a modern design. We have some new features um, with Bloom. We have some simplification on the front end for your users and then some simpli simplification on the back end for you as a content manager too. We have removed some redundancies, we added some more streamlined options. Um, we also cleaned up the code base for performance and you might not see that. That's not something you can necessarily touch, but your users, particularly the ones on mobile devices might notice a little bit of an imp improvement in performance, which is really important. And one thing that I really wanna call out is your sites look fantastic. All the GovHub sites are looking so, so good. And we're really excited about it because it's not just what we did. Um, it's you leaning into this design and really kind of grabbing it with both hands and saying, okay, let me put some cool new images on my site or let me take what DSGA gave me and build on it or not just maintain it, but make it better than what we handed to you with your home pages. So we want to celebrate that kind of over the next um, several slides. I just want to pull out some real highlights. So one of my favorite features, one of the favorite features on Bloom has been alerts. We've gotten a lot of feedback about the improvement um, that we made on alerts. So to remind you, um, this was pre-Bloom. This is what they look like. Um, they were informative, but they took up quite a lot of space, especially if you started stacking the alerts, which sometimes you need to. You might have two or three things even that you want to announce that are important. So it was important to us to make sure the alerts grabbed a user's attention, but also didn't take up too much space. So this is what alerts look like in Bloom. Um, this is just one on the page, but it's, it's the same alert from the previous screen. It's just some of the extra text then is clicked to rather than all going into that space. So it takes up much, much less space on the page. It's very easy to see with the bright colors. And uh, we've heard a lot of feedback from you about alerts and, and really kind of liking them. And we can see how you're using them across your site and you're doing a really good job there. Some of the other favorite features are what you're using at the top of your pages. It's not just one component. There's lots of different things you can do there. So I just want to show a couple of highlights, um, some, some ones that I went through and noticed 
how you can kind of see how the same component might have a real different feel depending on what you do with it or using a different component could really give you a different feel. So the first one I want to show you is OPB and um, it's simple. It's very professional. It's very official. And doesn't that convey exactly what you would expect o from OPB? The next one is lighter. It's kind of a little more um, straightforward. It's very light. This is GOSA's website. So they introduce the agency there on the left-hand side, but then on the right-hand side, some links right there at the top. So your users can come in and get to just what they're looking for. It's really effective. This is a whole different feel. This is DBHDD. Now this is really great use of imagery here. This is a hero component. And it's speaking to the audience. It's conveying a feeling that the agency wants their audience to have when they visit the website. Big, bold words, be supported. It's telling them that this is a, a safe place and the imagery really supports that too. So I think that's a great choice of imagery. And there's another one next using the exact same component with a whole different feel. So this is DOL, the Department of Labor, who recently rebranded. Um, the tone of DOL is friendly, it's approachable, it's energetic. And doesn't that image say that to you? Just their really uh, great choice of a picture there. And if you notice, um, there are some colors there at the bottom of the image. That's not a GovHub thing at all. That's really clever use of imagery where they overlaid their brand colors right at the bottom, just to really kind of double down on um, that picture being a big part of their brand. So I thought that was a really neat use at the top of the page. It really conveys what they were looking to. As does this, the Georgia Commission on Family Violence, um, introducing what the agency does on the left-hand side of the screen, but the right-hand side is almost like a call to action. If you need help, call us and here's how to get in touch. Right there at the top, this is the information that some users might need when they first visit this website. This website is using the um, featured intro section, which is a new section that we introduced in Bloom. Um, we love it and a lot of agencies seem to really like it too. Um, it's really, um, it's, it's kind of uh, able to be used in many different ways. So this is the same, um, this is the same featured intro section, but you can see it feels a little bit lighter with the icon list on the right side. Get your key links, the key information users want to know right at the top, direct them where they need to go. And this one, we chose to use um, the friendlier kind of icon list so that people can kind of see what it is that they're interested in. This is the Georgia Soil and Water Conservation Commission, by the way, a very nice, nicely done website. This next one is whole different look, but it's the same featured intro section, believe it or not. Um, they just chose to use different colors on DJJ. It's dark, it's bold, it has a really effective image there. You could see yourself part of that team. Maybe you're interested in working there. Maybe you're um, interested in the people who work there. It really conveys a lot about the agency right at the top in a very bold way. And even the contact us button really just jumps off the screen with that dark um, kind of color behind it. So I really wanted to point that one out as a great use of the featured intro section too. A little bit different from how most agencies use it. This is the GTA site. Um, the imagery is more, it's relevant, but it's more kind of background imagery. It's not key to the message that we're delivering, but it's supportive of the message that we're delivering. If you go to 47 Trinity, that's what you're gonna see, a bunch of people standing around the whiteboard. So it's really relevant but it's not intrusive, which is really nice. This is DOR, and I promise I just have a couple more, but I could go all day with y'all sites because you did so well. Um, but I wanted to show DOR here. That, now I pulled this image during the height of tax season. So you can see it's bold, all of the links that you need right there at the top, just anticipating the user's needs, get them where they need to go. And the last top of page example that I wanna show is using a different um, kind of component. This is using the background image where they've um, laid in the state flag. It's very patriotic, it's bold, and it's very effective for the, um, the Georgia Commission on Equal Opportunity. So great job on those. Um, if I didn't call out your agency, it's 
only because I don't have all day. I would love to take all day and show you um, all of the cool things that you've done. But I hope you'll look at these and kind of learn other things that you might be able to do as well, some ideas you might not have have had. So um, I don't want to forget the rest of these pages. So a little bit down the page from the top, we have a lot of micro content being used on landing pages. Um, this is a really good one. Um, this is GVRA. And I really like the way that they've used their news teasers or news items, blogs. If you have an image and you have a little list of news teasers, the first one's going to show that image. And that's really, really impactful to a user. And I captured this image when I was hovering over that top one so you could kind of see the contrast of the color and how it really draws your eye there. Um, really nice use of news teasers. And then also on the right side of the screen here on GVRA, I wanted to show you how the icons look in those cards. Um, we had them in the center of the cards on our old design, which was called the forest design. But in bloom, we moved them just over to the right and just streamlined them a little. And it gives such a clean and professional feel. And I thought that this was a really nice use of that. Okay, the next one I wanna brag on is DCH. Um, DCH introduced a lot of imagery and a lot of personality onto the website. And here's tiles in Bloom. We clean them up quite a lot in the new design. And this is just a really neat, effective use of tiles. Very personal, grabs you, but they're all really relevant to um, what you're gonna be clicking to. I thought that one looked really, really good. And then I think this is my last one. This is DHS. Um, another way to convey lots of links in a visual way without using actual imagery is to use our icon list. Um, it's very effective. It's very clean. It's very easy to use for your users. So I thought this was a, um, a really good use. This is on the child support site, which is under DHS. All right, so um, besides Bloom, we also did other major initiatives, and I'm just going to touch on them because you've already heard about Orchard, for example, um, and even Nikhil mentioned Drupal 10. But I want to call out, um, this was the same team working at the same time that built and deployed um, Bloom for everybody. So a lot of work was happening behind the scenes that you may not have known about. So of course, Julie just talked to us about Orchard. Um, please reach out to us. It, it was so important to us that this new design come out with Bloom that you also can extend it to your application so your users don't feel lost, you know, when they go from your website over to your app. So reach out to us and get started. Um, dive right into Orchard. I think that you're going to find it really useful and your, your users will appreciate it too. Okay, so Drupal 10, I'm just going to touch on this so you can see kind of the enormity of it. We had to touch, at least look at, really touch 175 approximately Drupal modules. Our developers had to update three different themes for Drupal 10. And the big kicker is the users who noticed and sent us a support request was a big goose egg. We were so happy about that. We didn't want you to notice. We wanted to tell you it happened after it happened, but we didn't want you calling and saying, oh my goodness, what went wrong? So congratulations to our development team. That was really a huge, huge um, initiative for us. All right. So that was the last year. Well, now we want to talk about the roadmap. The secret's already out of the bag. I was going to announce Jasmine. Um, our our GovHub leader is back. She had a short hiatus um, and just rejoined our team, and we couldn't be happier. So I'm going to turn this over to Jasmine to talk about the future. Yes. Thank you, Donna. I am so happy to be back on this amazing team and just in time for Gov Talks, which is my favorite time of the year. Um, and I'm just really excited to be here and be able to present uh, what's in store for GovHub. So where we are with the current roadmap, um, we want to go to the next slide. Am I running this far? Okay, there we go. All right. So, you know, here we are with the current roadmap. It's, a lot of this has been mentioned already. Um, last October, we finished the rollout of the Bloom theme. And like Donna mentioned, the sites are gorgeous. Um, the theme really breathes new life into GovHub. And it really is a testament to all of our commitment to provide the best experience for our constituents. So great work team. Um, now we're looking to gather feedback about how you all feel about the new theme, you know, how folks are responding to it internally, as well as any comments you have gathered from your visitors. So, you know, look out for a survey that will be sent out soon. Um, we also completed the migration, like um, Donna mentioned and like Nikhil mentioned, 
from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10. So that was a, uh, a major update, uh, a major version update, but we are continuing um, to update GovHub to the latest stable versions of Drupal 10 and looking to the future versions of Drupal. Um, the implementation of Google search to replace solar is complete. Uh, one piece that we're wrapping up right now is a very important one, which is the ability to exclude PDFs from your site's internal search. So that was a feature that was available in the last uh, search implementation. So we want to make sure that that is continue, that will continue to be a feature available to you all. Um, and lastly, we are wrapping up an enhancement to the content moderation workflow. So as you can see, uh, with this last push, we want to address uh, a better way to incorporate the scheduling component when actually when you're actually changing the moderation state of your content. So right now, the user interface is not as informative as it could be, and it doesn't really provide the necessary flexibility to make this feature useful. You know, it's always been there, but the usage has been pretty low because it's not really helpful. So our goal is to empower the content editor with the ability to be able to make clear decisions and know exactly what is going on and what is gonna to happen to their content and when. We want what we want to do is uh, provide more decision making abilities to the content editor when it comes to creating that content and or excuse me, scheduling that content moderation. So essentially exposing all of the options for the content moderation without having to click through too much. So right there on the screen, when you're planning to uh, change the moderation state, you can also schedule when to publish that moderation state change all in one screen. So. That is uh, what we plan for the interface interface changes, and we hope that the content editors will use scheduling more to create a more robust workflow for their organization. So what's next for GovHub? So as Julie laid out the capabilities of Orchard, we want to actually help agencies use it so we can see it in action. Um, it's cool for it to be there, but I know that um, it can be a little bit intimidating going through all of those features and knowing how to apply it to your projects. So we want to help with that. Um, that will assist, that will help us assist where to focus our efforts for feature development and get that crucial feedback that we need in order to improve on this product. So we need your feedback. <laughs> um, we will be working on ways to guide agencies to use Orchard more um, in order to create that vital feedback loop. All right. And so um, as Donna alluded to, you know, not everything on the roadmap is apparent and visible to our content editors and our visitors, but it is still extremely important um, for future proofing GovHub and for its overall success as a tool that agencies really rely on. So we plan to continue to fortify GovHub by ensuring that we have a robust testing suite. And I know that probably doesn't sound cool and exciting, but we are making sure that we have adequate test coverage because that becomes more and more important as we roll out these new features and build upon existing ones. So it's um, also to ensure that we're actively assessing the strength, uh, assessing the strength of our code, which lends to offering peak performance and security support for GovHub. Another is to um, is updating the latest version of CK Editor, like Nikhil mentioned before. It's going to um, provide a major performance upgrade, which is a huge uh, value add for that feature. But it also will get all of the cool out of the box features that the latest version of CK Editor five um, offers. So you know, definitely be on the lookout for that. That's something that's in the works. And lastly, we will continue to update to the bleeding stable edge of all of the technologies that power GovHub. So like I mentioned before, we upgraded from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10, which was a major version update, but we will continue to update to every minor version of, of Drupal 10 and look out for the upcoming major version update to Drupal 11, which is right around the corner. <laughs> all right. So some of the roadmap considerations we've been uh, planning for include gathering that feedback I mentioned to inform any design enhancements that we need to make to Bloom. Um, so definitely, again, be looking out for our uh, solicitation of that feedback 
Um, we've been looking to create some sort of notification system of, for GovHub as well. You may have, we may have mentioned that in some of our um, advisory committee meetings and things like that. So right now we're focusing on formalizing the MVP for that feature. We're also looking to take advantage of all of the latest features that are provided through Lucent Improved. So that way we can equip you all with the tools you need in order to keep that gap score nice and high and for more people to participate in that effort. Um, Overall, the plan for GovHub really is to explore ways to better market GovHub and showcase how it's allowed our agency partners to take the guesswork out of building a beautiful website and focus on providing great content and experiences. So we want to leverage um, what we can um, in GovHub as a way to collaborate with other state agencies, to engage with their tech teams and initiatives, and hopefully, hopefully provide some guidance where we can. All right, so want to take a moment to, uh, like Donna mentioned, welcome a couple of folks to the GovHub family. First, we want to welcome the all-payer claims database. I'm super excited to have them as such an important tool for the constituency um, and have them on, on GovHub. We also want to um, welcome uh, Corrections, the Georgia Department of Corrections. Um, when they joined, uh, their site immediately became one of our most highly trafficked sites on GoHub. Um, they had a huge overall about how they presented their content, and the site is very friendly and inviting and well-maintained. So we're very proud to have this organization as a part of GoHub as well. All right. And last but not least, we want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all the people that make this work happen. So we are heavy on giving credit where credit is due. So we have to give a huge thank you to our lead technical architect, Jenna Tollerson, um, who has provided the technical vision and strategy for GovHub from its inception. She also leads a team of developers, our partners at Lullaby, that provide amazing support to maintain GovHub and help us with our feature development. So all the things that we dream of, that we want for GovHub, we bring it to them and they either say, that's a great idea, or you know, maybe we should think of it a different way. So they are a huge uh, support for our team as well. And GovHub as a product to agencies also includes dedicated support, which is led by the wonderful and ever so pleasant Erica Rowe. So I wanted to give her a shout out as well. She runs DISC and um, all of our interactions on, most of our interactions on DISC, I will say, are, are very pleasant because of her, her leadership. Um, a lot of the work that we do is also informed by the folks that we serve. So I want to give a shout out to the GovHub Advisory Committee. These are representatives from the agencies that are a part of GovHub that take time out of their day to provide immensely valuable feedback to our team in the form of ideas for new features and reviews of existing features. So thank you, GovHub Advisory Committee. And if you want to be a part of that committee, please reach out to us. Uh, we definitely love to, you know, get as many people as we can um, in, in that um, discussion. So, and lastly, we not only serve the agency partners, but we also serve you, the visitors of GovHub sites. So thank you for your feedback. It is welcomed. And it also provides a, value, a valuable perspective on all the work that we do to connect you all with your government. So thank you. Thank you all. We look forward to continuing to improve GovHub in every way possible. Remain ready to usher in the latest and greatest technologies and foster a inclusive collaboration environment to provide the best user experience for our content editors and visitors.